What's up YouTube, back with another video and today I'm going to go over 4 plays in the Grizzlies playbook here in 2K22. All 4 of these plays are in both current gen and next gen but I'll be demonstrating them on next gen. So with that being said, let's get into it. First play is the fist 91 side. You can call this for anybody that has pick and roll ball handler priority. If you don't know what play priorities are, I'll leave a video linked in the description where I'll talk about that and also go over a lot of things related to offensive play calling in that video as well. And if you play my league and you're looking for this play, it'll be under pick and roll option and it's just a double ball screen. So I'm going to run it and then go into replay and talk about it. So right here, I call it for Morant. He starts with the ball on the wing. Then he's just going to get this double ball screen from Adams and Jaron Jackson. And from here, you could take this three depending on um, if this center hedges or not. So um, I always say these double ball screens could be good against people that off ball and center sit because a lot of the times they don't hedge out on these three. So you can you could get this three up here or you can dribble off to the wing because you do have a lot of space. Um, you could also take uh, faders if, you know, use John Morant. He has difficult shots. Or if you play my team or um, you have somebody else that has a pretty good mid-range and difficult shots, you could come off these double screens and take, like, faders right here. If you practice those, um, you can make those shots pretty consistently. But I decide to drive, and I actually end up getting a contact dunk. And if you have somebody that's athletic like Ja, so Ja has limitless takeoff and posterizer on gold, um, once you drive and if you're on next gen, you could just hold down on the analog and basically force um, a dunk animation. Now, whether you make it or not depends on your timing and you could also get blocked doing that. So it's not something that you can do like every single time, but um, holding down on the analog will get you the animation most of the time. But whether you make it or not is, you know, like I said, it's up to timing and whether or not you get blocked. But um, it's good for um people who are athletic because like once you get around this area, like John Moran, he has limitless takeoff on gold. So like if you have that on gold or better, like you can hold down on the analog once you get into like this area of the court and you will get a dunk animation. So once I get about right here, I just, you know, I hold down on the analog. I get um this contact dunk animation and I dunk on Jared Allen. So pretty simple play, but still really effective. It can be hard to guard. And like I said, once you come off those screens, you can get those mid-range faders. And you can also force switches as, as well. So right here, I'll force a switch and I'll probably just back out and post up Adams. And yeah, so you got a lot of pretty good options when you use these double ball screen plays. The next play is the quick five out floppy. This is a three point play that you can call for anybody that has three point priority and is designed to get you a three on the wing. So right here, I call it for Desmond Bain. He's gonna start with the ball on the wing. Then I'm gonna pass it to Jaron Jackson at the top. And I'm gonna just wait. And then he gets this screen from Anderson, goes baseline, and then he gets this double screen from Adams and Morant. He comes out to the wing and he gets open for the three. Play also ends in a pick and roll if you don't get open for the shot. But to be honest, it's not really all that good to me personally anyway. So um, again, I run the play and... Let's say I don't get open for the shot. Adams comes and sets a screen for you. But I don't really like it because you don't really have a lot of space to work with. Like if this corner was empty and it would be a lot better. But since Morant is in this corner, you just don't have a lot of space. And even though like the, the defense kind of just plays is really bad. So I get a, a free slip and a dunk. But yeah, I personally, I don't, I don't really like this. It's just too, it's just too cluttered over here. Like people could easily blitz you and you won't, you might not be able to get like certain passes through if like they decide to trap you and you really, you really don't have like anywhere to go. So, um, I, I would avoid like using this. Like if I don't get the shot, I'd probably just, um, do something else. So another pretty simple play, but it's still pretty good. 
Um, the only thing is that when you when you up here, you'd be like, you know, kind of standing around idly for a little while. So um, people may be able to read that you're running it. So it's not the quickest, but it's not the slowest neither. It's like somewhere in the middle. And um, you, like normally he would go, he would just go through the screens normal. Like he would get, normally he would get this screen and then go around and get this double screen. But I think like depending on how the defense is playing, like if someone like tries to overplay, then he will go here and then he will get this screen again, come back here and get open for the three on the, on this wing. So that is another um option that can happen. It's just, it really depends on what the defense is doing. The next play is the quick 14 series. This is a three point play that you could call for anybody that has three point priority and is designed to get you a three at the top of the key. So right here, I call it for Desmond Bain. He's going to start with the ball on the wing. Then I'm going to hand the ball off to Anderson and then give the ball to Morant. Bain, he runs to the block. And then he will get this double screen from Adams and Anderson. Come out to the top of the key and he gets open for the three. So this play is pretty nice. I, I chose this play to do like a little like snippet of the best play in the playbook. And I like this play because the three point option is good, but you also get a lot of space on this side of the court for somebody like Morant. So as you know, as the play is running and you're waiting for the screens, you can use this as somewhat of an ISO as well. You can hit them with some jabs and Right here, I just drive all the way and I get a dunk. But you can take a lot of these these faders right here. So like a lot of times um, when I'm on a wing and I'm isoing, like I would drive right here and then like I would do like a, a spin shot and like spin like spin away from the defender. Usually like when they're when you when they're on your hip like this, you can um, do like a spin shot and like they usually like will go flying out of bounds or just to the point where you'll get open. So if you have somebody that has a good mid range and they have difficult shots, that's also an option. And like I said, with somebody like Morant, um, you can just throw out a couple jabs and get to the rim and potentially get a dunk. And the last play is the punch 25 curl. This is a post-up play that you call, you can call for anybody that has post-up low priority. And even though it's a post-up, I like using it to get some threes. So right here, I call it for Steven Adams. He's going to start on the elbow. But uh, Bean also gets open on this play as well. So Moran has the ball at the top. Then Bain will just get a simple down screen from Kyle Anderson. And he comes out to the wing. You'll be open for the shot a lot. So if this shot is there, then you can take it. And this is what I run the play for. I run the play to get this shot. But if you do have somebody that you want to play through in the post and you don't want either you don't want to shoot the shot or it's just not open um if you let the play run anderson he sets this screen right here for steven adams and he kind of like ducks in so you could get him getting the ball right here and you have pretty good post position um sometimes you might be able to force a switch so you most likely get a smaller guy on your center which you know can help a lot when you try to um, score in the post and if, if and if you have a lot of shooters uh you'll notice that everybody is around a three-point line spacing the floor so once you have the ball in the post you have a lot of space so if anybody helps they're gonna be giving up a three so a pretty simple play but still pretty good and you'll get this shot a lot for either your uh shooting guard or your point guard so in a real game um if your point guard has the ball, then this it'll be your shooting guard to come off this screen and get the shot. But if your shooting guard has the ball, your point guard would be the one that's down here to come off the screen and get the shot. So 
depending on who you want to shoot the ball, you know, give the ball to whoever you need to give the ball to. So that's pretty much it for the plays. Um, these plays are pretty simple for the most part, but they're still pretty good. Um, there's a couple other plays that I think are pretty good too. So this for spread is pretty good. The only thing is that it doesn't work on next gen. It works on current gen though. So if you play current gen, you can run this. And like, as you can see right here, um, it's supposed to be a side pick and roll between, you know, Morant and Adams. But as you can see, Desmond Bain, he just, he just walks in between the play and he just basically ruins the play. So that's not supposed to happen. Everybody, all these guys are supposed to stay over here and you, the play is supposed to be this side pick and roll between, you know, whoever you call the play for. So this case is Morant and Adams. So Bain, he's not supposed to do this. On current gen, he doesn't do this. That's why I said on current gen, it works. Um, on next gen, this play is bugged. And yeah, he basically just ruins the play right here. So that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, I hope this helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more content.